All right, before anybody loses their mind or goes crazy, I want y'all to please read the title and take note of the key word, which is could. Anthony Joshua could take that same blueprint that Francis Ngannou just laid out and beat Tyson Fury. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to quickly explain why. If you look at Tyson Fury's career, there's a distinct moment where his style changed. Everybody knows early Tyson Fury, the version that beat Klitschko, the version that beat Cunningham, the version that first rose to fame, was known for being the big 6'9 heavyweight that moves like a lightweight. He had that herky-jerky. Remember, remember he used to do the crazy herky-jerky? Everybody called him boring. He never finished nobody. He was a decision fighter with great head movement, a quick jab. He would just jab you, stay on the outside, and nobody could touch him. Now, I want you to split that half of his career and then think about all of his fights from the first Fury fight versus Wilder on. So the second Wilder fight and then every fight after that, he had a significant change in his style when he went from Ben Davidson to the new Kronk gym. And the difference in his style, if even in his body style, if you look at the Klitschko fight, yes, he was a little bit chubby, but he had more muscle. He didn't have as much of a gut and he didn't weigh in as heavy. And the reason why is his new style. He laughs at everybody when y'all make fun of his big fat body because that new big fat body is exactly what allows him to employ his new style. His new style is he puts that all that fat, he lays on you. He beats you on the inside. He still has that he still has that style. He can still jab on the outside and beat you like that. But the way that he became a puncher and the way that he be, began to stop people, look at that second Wilder fight. He walks him down, he clinches, he he's one of the biggest clinchers in the game. Look at how much clinching he does. Even look at the Ngannou fight. Look at how much clinching he did. And the key where Francis Ngannou kept it competitive is this. Take note of this. Tyson Fury has not fought anybody that is as strong as him or as big as him in the clinch since he gained all that weight. Everybody know Deontay Wilder is known to be undersized. He weighs in 210, 220, maybe 230 at the most. Fury can put that big, fat body all over him, and there's not a damn thing they can do. He can drain him. He can put the body on him. He can clinch him. He can bully him on tight. He can. You see, a lot of times he'll, he'll lean on you and then push you up against the rope and then just kind of lay there. He puts his body into you. Now... This is where Anthony Joshua can come into this. Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou have very similar body styles. They're both about 6'6", and they both can weigh in if they want to get really slim and trim and get really disciplined. They can be like 240, 250, or like Ngannou did with this fight, they can come in heavy, they can bulk up, and they can be 260, 270 just as big as Fury. Francis Ngannou weighed in at 270. Francis Ngannou was not able to be bullied in the clinch. Francis Ngannou, he didn't win the fight overall, if you judge it round by round, but Francis Ngannou won on the inside. Y'all saw, every time Fury went to clinch, he didn't look comfortable. He did not look comfortable. And I'm not saying this is like some, you know, revolution that we all just discovered and now Tyson Fury is just going to fall off and everyone's going to be able to beat him. No, it's going to take a certain body style, which is why I'm sick, which I'm like, which is why I'm pinpointing Anthony Joshua. Sorry, I just had a tongue twister there. I'm still picking Fury against Usyk because Usyk doesn't have that size where he's able to deal with this new walk you down, clinch you, Tyson Fury, he, he he doesn't have the size. He's six foot three. I mean, maybe he can be such a wizard that he still can win. 
But I'm 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 favoring Tyson Fury in that fight. And the only heavyweight that I see that's still relatively young in their prime and is big and strong enough to not be manhandled and leaned on in the clinch, like Nganu, is Anthony Joshua. Now, I will say this. The only reason why I say Anthony Joshua, you know, while I say he does have a chance, why he probably wouldn't pull it off, is that for Anthony Joshua to employ this game plan and beat Tyson Fury, we, we need to see the old Anthony Joshua. We need to see the Anthony Joshua that fought Dillian White. That was willing to get in tight, to willing to make it a brawl, to willing to get down and dirty. But the one issue that we've seen with Joshua is his punch resistance. Since the first Ruiz fight, we don't, I mean, I don't even know if it's gone. It's just that he doesn't even want to engage. He doesn't, he doesn't like getting hit. Like, of course, nobody likes getting hit, but it's like to a concerning level that is hindering his fight style completely. So, you know, if, if, if he's not willing to go for it, then of course, Fury can still beat him with that new style or with the old style. He can beat him either way. But if Anthony Joshua can establish that old killer instinct that he once had, and he's not able to be manhandled in that clinch, he comes in heavy. I think he can give Fury a run for his money. I'm serious. Hate me all you want. But I think it's facts. I am a Joshua fan, but you can't call me a fanboy. And the reason why is because in MMA, people say MMA math doesn't work. In boxing, we can just say styles make fights. And funny enough, I say Anthony Joshua has the best chance against Fury with his style and his size. But obviously, Usyk has the style to beat Joshua. And say Joshua does beat Fury. His first defense is Wilder. I would pick Wilder. Just because he's proven to be chinny. And there's one thing about Deontay Wilder that we learned in that trilogy with Tyson Fury. There's one if there's one thing we learned in that trilogy with Tyson Fury is him getting hit hard is not going to make him back down. Y'all saw the way Anthony Joshua got stopped by Ruiz and then he came in that rematch and he was fighting on the back foot. You know, he was trying to outbox him and be technical. He wasn't trying to engage in a firefight. Deontay Wilder got walked down and stopped in that second fight. And what did he do in that third fight? He came do or die. You're going to have to kill Deontay Wilder. And I respect that about him. And I've actually always been a bigger fan of Joshua than Wilder. But that trilogy showed me he's a dog. And he has a lot more dog in him than the Joshua I've seen in all his fights since the Ruiz rematch. And it's just interesting how much styles make fights. And, you know, I think the heavyweight division is very interesting. And the main thing that this Francis Ngannou fight showed me is that, you know, it's possible, you know, Tyson Fury just didn't come in. He took him. He didn't take him serious. He took him lightly. He didn't really train enough. And this whole video could be in void if that's the case. But if it's not, and... And Gano really is able to muscle him around like that, no matter what. And that body style really is an issue for Fury. Then we could be in for an interesting fight if Joshua reaches that point. I just think that's an interesting way to look at it. And that is a, a real weakness that hasn't been addressed. He hasn't fought anybody as big as him. He has not fought anybody that can muscle him around in that clinch since he adopted his new style. And the way Nganu was able to muscle him around and not be pushed around in the clinch, I can see a parallel between Joshua 
and in Ghana where if Ngannou was able to employ that in his first ever boxing match, why the hell can't Anthony Joshua? If he's still who he once was. That's the key. If he's still who he once was. So, I'm going to be interested to see how this heavyweight division plays out. But um, that fight showed me that maybe... The skill gap between Fury is not as wide as we once thought. And maybe he's not as unbeatable as we once thought. I don't know. Joshua, if you still got that dog killer instinct in you, I think you still got a shot. But I'm going to tell you right now, (laughs) don't be fighting Wilder. (laughs) Eddie Hearn, hold out. Hold out for that Fury fight. Because anybody that watched that Ngannou fight, you should see the parallels between Ngannou and Joshua. Those are the the, the closest pure boxer to Ngannou's size, stature, and style would be Anthony Joshua. Simple as that. If you guys don't agree, please let me know. I hope I remembered everything that I wanted to cover in this video, but I do these videos off the dome. I do these live, and I just kind of talk what I, what's on my mind. So if, if, if I miss something or if I said something dumb that you disagree with, drop a comment. We can debate in the comments. Let's get it. But I stand on what I said. That fight showed me the biggest threat that can use that same style is Anthony Joshua. Facts. 